One of the problems, not specifically on this issue, just in general, that, uh, that um, uh, let's put it this way, money trumps um, peace sometimes. <laughs> in other words, commercial interests are very powerful interests throughout the world. Excuse I'd me, like to, like David, to, David. Thank you, sir. I'd like to follow on Iran. Critics say that you are using the same quality of intelligence about Iran that you use to make the case for war in Iraq, specifically about WMD that turned out to be wrong, and that you are doing that to make a case for war mm. against Iran. Is that the case? Uh, I can say with certainty that the Quds Force, a part of the Iranian government, has provided these uh, sophisticated IEDs that have harmed our troops. And I'd like to repeat, I, I do not know whether or not the Quds Force was ordered from the top echelons of government, but my, my point is, what's worse, them ordering it and it happening, or them not ordering it and it's happening? <laughs> And, uh, and so we will continue to protect our troops. We, David, our, our, our strategy is comprehensive in order to resolve problems that will affect our own peace and the peace in the world. And the biggest problem I see is the Iranians' desire to have a nuclear weapon. And uh, as you know, we've been dealing with this issue ever since you've been covering me and pretty much ever since I've been the president. Uh, and my, we made it very clear to the Iranians that if they would like to have a dialogue with the United States, there needs to be a verifiable suspension of their program. I would hope that they would do that. I would like to be at the, give, have been given a chance for us to explain that we have uh, no desire to harm the Iranian people. But my focus is on making sure that this weapon is dealt with. The program is dealt with in a constructive, peaceful way and will continue to work toward achieving our common objectives with other nations in the world in a peaceful way. Cheryl. Using faulty intelligence to provoke Iran. Well, no, I heard your question, and I told you I was confident that the Quds Force, a part of the Iranian government, was providing weaponry into Iraq. And to, to, and to say it is provoking Iran uh, is, a, uh, is just a wrong way to characterize the commander-in-chief's decision to do what is necessary to protect our soldiers in harm's way. And I will continue to do so. Uh, Martha. Mr. President, do you agree with the national intelligence estimate that we are now in a civil war in Iraq? And also, you talk about victory, that you have to have victory in Iraq. It would be catastrophic if we didn't. You mm -hmm. said again today that the enemy would come here, and yet you say it's not an open-ended commitment. Yeah. How do you square those things? Uh, you know, victory in Iraq is not going to be like victory in World War II. And that's it's one of the challenges I have to explain to the American people um, what Iraq will look like in a situation that uh, will enable us to say we have accomplished our mission. Uh, first, the Iraq will be a society in which there is uh, relative peace. I say relative peace because if it's like zero car bombings, it never will happen that way. It's, it's like, you know, I mean, the, the fundamental question is, uh, can we help this government have the security force level necessary to make sure that the ethnic cleansing that was taking place in certain neighborhoods is stopped? 